Welcome to the Retreat Leaders Podcast, your sanctuary with retreat experts, where we spill the tea on retreat success. Here we dive into crafting transformational guest experiences, talk about how to avoid pitfalls, and unlock marketing secrets. Whether you're a seasoned guru or a budding enthusiast, we've got the inside scoop for you. Join us as we learn how to flourish in this magical world of retreats. Hey guys, welcome to the Retreat Leaders Podcast, formerly the Happy Hour Podcast. This is Shannon. So this week, I thought we would talk about something that I don't know if it gets talked about enough. (laughs) Maybe a lot of these topics don't get talked about enough. But really, what I want to focus on this week is the importance of energy alignment, especially in a retreat setting. I mean, I'm a big believer that energy needs to align in any kind of interaction that I do. I'm at this season of life now where it's like, I might meet someone. If our energy doesn't align, great. I'm going to wish you well. And that's probably all the interaction we're going to have because I really want to make sure that my energy is in alignment with somebody else's energy. This does not mean that we exactly believe the same things or are the same person. It's just an energy alignment, right? And so sometimes we work with or meet people that's like, "Mm, that feels very off to me or, you know, whatever may be the case, it just doesn't align. You know it, you feel it in your body. You know it. And so we were going to talk about the importance of making sure that you have energy alignment on your retreat. Because when you're organizing a retreat, the harmony and energy of your group seriously are as crucial as the itinerary and accommodations and meal, everything. To be honest, like one misaligned guest can significantly disrupt the atmosphere and dynamic of the entire experience. So we are going to talk about why it's essential to ensure that everyone's energy aligns with yours. So they're your ideal guest, right? So they align with yours in a retreat setting and how it can impact the overall success of the retreat. So let's get started. Hey there, retreat leaders. Are you ready to supercharge your marketing game and sell out your next transformational retreat? Of course you are. And I've got something special just for you. Introducing our free guide, the top three marketing tools for retreat leaders. This just isn't any guide. It's your ticket to discovering the top three tools that will help you create a sold out, unforgettable retreat experience. But wait, there's more. We've included a little bonus inside to give you that extra edge. Curious about what that is? You'll have to download it to find out. Ready to grab your free guide and take the first step towards retreat marketing mastery? Well, visit retreatmarketingtools.com and download your copy now. And remember, it's absolutely free. So why wait? Visit retreatmarketingtools.com to get your guide and start transforming your retreat marketing strategy today. Okay, what does even an energy alignment really mean? Let's like maybe break it down a little bit. So energy alignment is really referring to like the synergy between energies and the vibes, like the vibes of individuals within a group setting, right? So that's what we're talking about. And in a retreat where The guests, you know, they often engage in introspective and community building activities. And so a cohesive energy can foster deeper connections. It really does facilitate like genuine transformations and it creates this supportive environment, which is really conducive to growth. So, I mean, you can see how important that energy alignment can be. Conversely, though, misaligned energies can seriously, it can lead to conflicts, discomfort among your guests and just overall a less effective retreat experience. If you've hosted any event, a dinner at your house, and you've felt that feeling like when everybody leaves, like, oh, that was exhausting and not in a really like joyful way. And like, you just worked hard and it was really cool. But like in a, holy cow, why do I feel so exhausted and drained like energetically? You don't want that. (laughs) And that's what can happen. You can also just have bad energy after a situation depending upon how severe the misalignment is, right? So the impact on the group, I mean, listen, and retreat is a collective journey of exploration and growth, collective. So if there's misalignment, it affects everyone, right? Because each participant brings an energy that influences the group dynamics significantly. And so if someone's energy or attitude or vibe is out of sync with the overarching vibe, like the overall vibe and feeling and energy you're trying to create, well, then it can create friction, cause discomfort, or even big disturbances in the group. I mean, I've seen it, okay? I've had it happen on my retreats. And so these dynamics are super delicate, and they can easily be swayed by a dominant energy. 
So it's really important that you're ensuring that all your, your guests are on the same wavelength. And we're going to talk about some strategies to do that. Let's talk about how the energy influences like an individual experience because they're coming, most of your guests are coming for a purpose, right? They're coming maybe for personal growth, healing, peace, maybe fun, joy, adventure, excitement, deep learning, right? They're coming for a purpose. And when someone's energy is conflicting and they join that that retreat that has this purpose, it can hinder an individual's ability to fully engage in what you're trying to create. It hinders someone from fully being able to experience what you have created and what they came for. And so the disruption not only affects the whole group, but it can prevent specific individuals from achieving whatever personal breakthroughs they're seeking or whatever they're just trying to seek to accomplish on your retreat. It basically puts a block between what you are offering and what someone's receiving. And so it impacts the whole overall satisfaction and success of your retreat. This is where I want to say, if you feel it during the question back and forth on email or social media, or the exploration of a guest that's asking questions and exploring whether they should come, and you're already feeling a vibe, maybe set up a call with that guest and flesh it out a little further or prospective guest and listen, please listen. (laughs) If it doesn't align, let them not come. I want to say that again. If it doesn't align, let them not come. Do not focus on the income loss because that is not the case. You want to attract into your space those that you want to work with and that are bringing the energy and alignment that you are seeking. And if you allow someone to come into your space just because you want to collect income from them, it will actually hinder you in that moment and going forward. If they don't align, Let them not come. Hey, it's Shannon here. I'm just popping in really quickly to ask a big favor. Would you pause the show and go review it for us? Please. Reviews really help us to be able to get more guests and more experts on the show to help you transform your retreats. So if you wouldn't mind pausing and leaving us a review, that would mean everything. And if you're not already subscribed, do that too. Because the other side of it is what it does to you, the challenges for you as the facilitator, as a retreat leader. I mean, when you're trying to manage a group where energies are misaligned, it requires a lot of additional effort and it can become a giant stressor for you because instead of focusing on like delivering your content and facilitating transformative experiences, you're going to find yourself like mediating conflicts or addressing complaints or just trying to play like she said, she said, I don't know, like you're going to be like this almost feels like a playground monitor trying to stop all the nonsense from happening. Right. And the shift in focus can really dilute the quality and depth of your programming. And it just leads again to a less impactful retreat all the way up to a horrible retreat because ultimately you want to preserve your retreats integrity, right? The core purpose of every retreat, no matter what the overall vibe or theme or mission is, is also to provide a safe and nurturing environment where the guests can come and they can explore and grow in whatever ways that you have set out for them or that they are seeking. But if there's a particular guest energy that threatens the safety, whether it's through negativity, discord, resistance, complaining, attackful, whatever it is, it compromises your retreat's integrity, period. But having energy alignment, it helps maintain this safe, almost sanctuary-like quality of the retreat space. And it really is crucial. It is crucial for the effectiveness and the well-being of all of your guests. So let's just quickly talk about some strategies. And this this week's podcast is going to be a little shorter because I think I don't need to beat this up. You get the idea, right? If you don't get anything out of this, just get this one thing. If they don't align, let them not come. Okay. So let's talk about some other strategies, right? The first one is just starting with your marketing. What message are you sending? Are you crystal clear on who your retreat is for and who it isn't for? Do the guests know your values? Making sure all your promotional materials clearly communicate your retreat values, the type of energy expected. Again, who is it for and who is it not for? Because this transparency can really help attract the right participants, your right guests, and also deter those who are like, nope, that doesn't sound like that's for me. 
I have said this several times. I'm going to say it again. If you're marketing to everyone, you're marketing to no one. And you will market and bring in energy that doesn't align if you're marketing to everyone. Be super clear and super specific for your retreat. The other thing is you might consider adding a screening process in for after registration. Everybody knows I'm not a big fan of putting an interest form on your retreat and then having you know that whole process. If you are a very specific retreat and you have um, very specific needs, maybe you're a psychedelic retreat or tantric or something that just really requires that extra screening process, that's completely different. But otherwise, people should be able to register right at 2 a.m. when they're thinking about it and they want to register. However, you still can put some screening in the registration form itself, just a detailed application process in the registration form. And if you receive something that looks off to you from that registration form, follow up. Call the guests. Ask to do a video call. Go through those questions again. Don't be afraid to say, you know what, I'm really feeling like my retreat might not be a good fit for you because of XYZ, whatever that might be. What you don't want to say, this is just my opinion, you don't want to say, you know what, you're not a fit. <laughs> that just puts somebody on the defensive. And the truth is, is there's a mutual probably non-fit going on there, but it's just not necessary. It's more like, I don't think what I'm providing at my retreat is going to be a fit for you and it's going to help you with what it sounds like you're looking for, right? And so maybe adding that in as needed for based on whatever questions or responses you get. Are you a retreat host looking to take your marketing skills to the next level? Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned pro, our Retreat Marketing Masterclass is here to help you master, and I mean master, the art of retreat marketing. In this dynamic class, you'll dive deep into both digital and traditional marketing techniques tailored specifically for retreat hosts. Learn the secrets of social media strategies, content marketing, and even how to leverage AI to boost your outreach. But that's not all. Our masterclass offers continuous updates to keep you aligned with the ever-evolving market trends. Imagine transforming your retreats into sought-after, sold-out experiences. Ready to turn your vision into reality? Join our Retreat Marketing Masterclass today and watch your retreats flourish. Don't miss out on this opportunity to elevate your marketing game. Visit RetreatMarketingTools.com to enroll now and start your journey towards becoming a marketing master. And then setting ground rules. I do ground rules right at the registration. We have a participant agreement that is in the registration process that they have to read and sign. And it says lots of things about behavior and energy and expectations and all that of that kind of stuff. But also I reiterate it right when everybody arrives, right? When everybody arrives and we have our opening circle, we kind of go over a lot of those details and they get another copy of it at check-in as well. I want to be super clear so that when there is an issue, because I have had issues, I can go back to saying, you know, remember our participant agreement and remember what I said at opening circle. And unfortunately, this is not aligning with our values. And here's what's going to happen next. <laughs> so these are just a couple of things that you could possibly do. And then I'd love to hear from you if you've got other ideas or details, because listen, the success of a retreat really does hinge on the subtle, like it's subtle interplay of energies even. Sometimes it's really big and drastic, but sometimes it's just the subtle interplay of energies among your guests. And as you being the retreat leader, prioritizing energy alignment is not about exclusion, but about fostering this collective environment where all your guests can thrive and achieve their objectives. I said that a lot in my course. I've said that on this podcast. This isn't about exclusion. This is about making sure that the energy aligns for everybody that shows up because we are not for everyone. I am not for everyone. And it goes all the way around, right? And so I wouldn't go to a jump off a cliff type of retreat. That's not for me. You know what I mean? And so there are things that are just not for people. And listen, you might be one of those things. And so you want to make sure that you feel it and you understand it's not about exclusion, but about fostering this really beautiful collective environment. And when you carefully implement those things that we talked about, starting with your marketing, possibly screening after the initial application or registration form, making sure you set the ground rules. And again, even in the initial conversation with someone before they register, if you're feeling a vibe, listen, explore that and feel that out because you want to make sure that your guest's energy resonates well with your goals, with your value, with your other guests, so that you can create a powerful, cohesive retreat 
that seriously benefits you and everyone around you. All right, guys, until next week. Thanks for listening to the Retreat Leaders Podcast. Learn more at www.theretreatranch.com. See you next time.